Your test grades are now in. I got all the rest of them in this morning, so sometime today, double check. Uh, do, is there anyone here who forgot to give me their take-home test or that needs to turn in their take-home test because they were absent or were here? So if you have it, bring it on up, please. Were you absent? Did I give it to you yet? Okay, come on up. Yeah. Uh, I guess I could get them back, yeah. I wasn't planning on having them back if you want to swing by. So. What? Just go with it. She's just talking. No! Yes. I'm just saying that would be nice. I'm not good. Because then I would only have to see you for one day of the week. You know? Instead of like this. Uh, watch NCIS. And when we do the New York Times, you need to come see me when you're on the Or even if I'm on the Times. All right, so anyone else have their. Jake, you had your take home test finished, right? Well, I had given it to you enough that you'd work on it. Anybody else have their take home test that needs to be turned in? Some of you didn't turn it in. Good? Anybody else? Go once, or twice. Okay, if you. Stumble across that take home test going, he's not talking about me. If you happen to look online and yours says it's missing, it means guess what? So, just trying to point out. So, double check that later. Finn, did you get one of those take home tests? You got one? And you have to take it. All right, so some of you need to finish the test or take the test. Okay? So, a couple of you said I, I didn't get quite done. I can't. I never can tell you during this period if I can extend time. I have to talk to the rest of my team and see if they have the same situation. Because the policy here is you get the allotted amount of time, not extra. So um, if you feel like right now all tests are graded, they are in the grade book, whether they were complete or not. If you look at the end class portion, which is 30 points with a scale factor of 1.5, so it would make it worth 45 points. If you feel you can take a look at it, like if you got a 20 out of 30, you're good. But if you're looking at it going, oh, shoot, yeah, I didn't get done. Um, so a couple of you had said to me on Friday, hey, I didn't get quite done. Again, I can't tell you at that point in time until my the rest of my team says, yeah, um, this is what we're doing too. So let's make um, our due date for, for if you want to complete it and make up. So make up tests. Makeup tests. Uh, they can be done. I'd like them done by Thursday this week. Now, uh, when you all took it already, but some people were absent, right? Um, so makeup tests. Let's have them do by Thursday. If you didn't get done, let's also have it done by Thursday. Let's see. Um, I am off first period and fourth period, and if that doesn't, you know, if you just need to have a couple questions, come in and get a couple questions done. You know, it'll be like, oh, I have lunch, I never do that. Well, then you don't get those points back. Um, if, so that's if you just need to finish it. If you need to make it up, we can do it in, you know, two different parts. There is a computer part 
So if you are making up a test, like you haven't taken it yet, you can also come to my other, my other periods. So third period, if you happen to be off, and fifth period, if you happen to be off, I have the tests that aren't done or did not get done at all. Come see me in third period. So third period, if you're off, is down un, downstairs, like almost like diagonal that way. And then um, fifth period, I'm downstairs right across the hall. So like that way, but underneath us. So just look in and, you know, don't worry if I'm teaching. Come on in and we can get your Chromebook to, to finish that up. So does that make sense? I know it's Monday, so we're all trying to figure out what the heck. We good? Perfect? Happy? So, so just to re-emphasize, re those of you, some of you said, hey, I didn't get done with my test. That's fine. It's graded. If you come in by Thursday, you know, could be today all the way through the end of the day, Thursday, well, you know, end of fifth period Thursday, or if you're finishing it first and fourth, um, let's get that done and complete it. And so you get three points awarded for it. Cool? I'm not sitting around waiting for anybody, though. So if you're like, oh, I forgot to take my test, or two weeks from now, you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot to finish that test. Sorry. Well, I took the uh, test in the class. No, you finished, you did the in, you did the take home test. Okay, so your take home test, I now, you now have, so I'll put that in. So you need to still take the one that was on the Chromebook, as well as the, and you can break that up into two days if you want to. Cool? Everyone happy? All right, uh, let's take a look at some notes. Get this out. And again, this is the, um, this is the last, Unit as far as the semester goes, and someone had asked, "Hey, what should we know for the final?" Well, yeah, everything that we have gone over is subject to the final. Will there be a review? Yes. Will I get it to you? Yes. When? Not today. Some point. Cool. Yep. This is our very last unit. Of the semester. All right. So there's a front and back to these notes. On the back, I do have uh, four graphs. So what? What? I, you had said something. I just said. He said Okay. So on one of those graphs, I don't care which one. Try and graph both of those points on the back. So use one of those graphs and try and put both of those on. Once you get both of those on, put both of those on another graph. And then once you get both of those done on a third graph, you'll do that. So that should leave you your fourth graph blank. Yes? So just try to go through and decipher those things. So these are just graphing, so cover method might work, or finding the y-intercept using the slope might work. Um, and then you might have one where you might have the point, you plot that point first, and then you uh, plot the rest. Let's see if we can decipher those. Uh, 
another minute to get those done, maybe two. Okay, good point. Red, blue, or black. Well, you do you do the two red on one of the graphs, you do the two blues on one of the graphs, and you do the two blacks on one of the graphs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see right there on the big one. Oh, yeah. That's your key. Yeah. Oh, I will, I will be in my office as well, 6 to 38 all this week, and then 7 to 8 period I'll be off campus, so, so well, I'm usually off track, and then 6, 7 to 8 I'll be in my branch office, and I'll be with my books. And most of you should be at lunch either 4th or 6th. Or need to get lunch in the next day. All right, uh, may I... Start. All right, so the two first problems, the red ones, it was red, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph. So I have y equals 2x minus 5. So that, that would suggest, hey, find the y-intercept first. So the y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It's right there. And then the 2 would be the slope. That would say, hey, so go up 2 and write 1. And you draw your line. Is that okay so far? Yeah, it should be prior knowledge. We've been working on that. The second of the equation says, hey, we have negative 2 as a y-intercept, which is right there, and a slope of up 1, right 3. So that's what those two lines look like. They cross? Do they cross? They intersect each other, right? And so... This appears, this point right here appears to be 3 comma negative 1, at least on my graph. So they intersect each other. So I would say that would be the solution to the problem. That xy point, the point itself is the solution to the problem because they intersect each other. What was the next color down? Uh, black. Was black the second one? Blue. Or blue. Blue? Okay. Thank you. So blue is the second one. So then this one, I have y equals 2x minus 5. Oh, I think we just graphed that one, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so uh, from that, I go up 2, write 1. So that looks like that, right? correct? Um, 4x minus 2y equals 8. What's the way we learned how to graph those? Yeah. Cover method. So I had 4x minus 2y equals 8. So if I cover the y component, that means that 4 times that would be 2. 2 comma 0 is right there. Is that okay? And then my cover method here, um, that would give me negative 4. Can you tell me about those lines? They seem to be parallel. And what do we know about parallel lines? Same slope. So will they intersect? So these are parallel. They won't cross. All right, so the 
first one, the red one, we said they crossed, and the solution of the problem would be that point. The second one, the blue ones, are parallel to each other. They won't cross each other. So what do you think the solution would be? Set. No solution. Good. No solution. Okay, they don't cross. There's not a point value that is shared between those two lines. Though they are very close and they're parallel lines to each other, um, they won't cross ever, so there's not a solution. Okay, so then the third one, I think we did that in black, I think. Looks like, again, I have the same line, so I have one, two, three, four, five. And from there, I'm going to go up to right one. Is that okay? And then that one has, let's see, that the second equation is y minus 3 equals 2, x minus 4. Agree? So remember, there's a point that's given up here. It's opposite and opposite. So 4 comma 3. So 4, 1, 4 comma 3. Do that right. 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 3. So that's right there. I drew that right. And then I have a slope up to right one. That goes right there. So what can you tell me about these? What can you tell me about these two lines? They're what? Do they lie right on top of each other? They appear to be parallel, but they're the exact same line. It lies on top of itself, right? So. It, every point works. So this has infinite solutions. So there's infinite solutions. That sideways 8 means your infinity. Okay, so that's kind of your exploratory part of where we're going with this. So if we have two lines drawn on the same xy axis or the same grid or the same Cartesian plane or whatever the vocabulary they're using, those two lines can do one of three things. They can cross each other given one solution, which is the point. They can be parallel, meaning they'll never cross each other, which gives us no solution. They don't share any of the same points. Or they can be the exact same line, which they share all of the same points, which means you have infinite solutions. Okay, so graphing is one way we're going to start looking at doing these types of problems. Okay, so if you took... The only one up there that actually has a, that one single point, the 3 comma negative 1, is the red one. So if you took the point 3 comma negative 1 and plugged it into each of the equations, you would come out with a true statement. You'd come out with, uh, looks like uh, negative 1 equals negative 1, and then negative 1 equals negative 1 on both of the equations. Is negative 1 equal to negative 1? Yeah, so that, that verifies. So, if you have a solution, a point, and you plug it into both the equations, it comes out to a true statement. But we need to figure out what the heck goes on with parallel and or parallel and uh, same line. Okay. So this the next slide. Let's see if that was still up. So that was there. So this had one solution, which was a point. This one had no solution because they're parallel. And this one had infinite solutions because all points work. Okay? Does that make sense how I just stated that? All right. So, how do we solve systems graphing? Okay? Well, we do exactly what we had just done. So let's graph this one. y equals 3x plus 1. Okay, that's the same as this point right here. Where's my y-intercept on this? 1, so I'm going to go up here to 1, put a dot. So from there, I'm going to go up 3, write 1, and draw my straight line in. Okay, or draw as straight as possible. 
The second equation, we'll do in purple, and that's set up to allow the cover method to work. Agree? Make sense? Okay, so if I cover up my y, 2 times x equals 6, so 2 times 3, so this is going to give me 3 comma 0 as one point. And then if I cover up this, that means my x component is 0. And if I cover that, it looks like y is equal to 6. Okay? 0, 6. Does it appear these two lines are going to cross each other? So how many solutions do we have? One. And that solution is a what? A point. So we have one solution. We have a point. There's one solution. So let's figure out what that point is. It appears if I graph that right, I have one comma one, one comma four. That did I graph that? Okay. And so how would we justify if one comma four is correct? I could take that and plug it into each. So I'll plug into here. So that would give me four equals three times one plus one. Because four is equal to three. Is three times one. Is, is that equal? Is four equal to three plus one? Yeah. And then let's plug it into the second one, see what happens. I get two times my x value, which is one, plus my y value, which is four. Is that equal to six? Well, two times one is two plus four. Is two plus four equal to six? Is that true? Yeah. So it works on both. So our solution to this problem is 1, 4. Now, this is a very basic type of iteration of math. Okay? I know most of you have some sort of cell phone. And a lot of you have figured out on your cell phone that you plug in a certain code. Only 989 is the one you put fingerprint on, right? So let's figure that out, right? That is so. Uh, so, the math that's taking place, you all have used every day if you've had some sort of cell phone, or if you've had the key to unlock a door. You know, some keys won't even go into a lock at all. So that's not the solution. The key that works is the solution. If you have the solution, it will lock or unlock the door. Okay. If you don't plug in the right code on your phone, or somebody else's fingerprint goes on it. It doesn't work, and it recognizes this is not the solution. Nope, you can't get in. Now, I know there's ways to hack into things. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what is the math that's behind it, and it's this is a very simple version of it. Okay? So the solution works. All right, so this is the solution. How do we know it's a solution? You plug it in, okay? going to do that because last time we did work, so I'm not going to work it really hard. All right, so try this one on your own. This is y equals x plus 5 and y equals negative 4x. Oh, real quick though, some of you struggle with this. Negative 4x, what's the, what's the y-intercept? Zero. 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 So plus zero works, right? So remember that. Some of you kind of had forgotten that. But try that on your own, on your own paper. See how you do. Do these cross each other? I graphed a line, two of them. 
Okay. So I want to show you something as a tool. Now you're not going to be a pro at this at this point in time, but remember the graphing calculator we've been using? Watch this. Y equals X plus 5. Ready? I don't expect you to know how to do this right off the bat. I'm going to get up there. Nope, you don't need to. I'm just going to All right. Watch this. Ready? What was my first equation? X plus 5. And again, you don't need to know this. What was my second equation? Negative 4x. Four. Four. Four so there's a, my, a negative key down here. OK? So and if I do this in zoom standard, I'm in zoom 6. So there's my first line. There's my second line. They cross each other. Now watch this. This is really cool how this works. And again, you're not going to know how to do this. So does everyone agree those two lines intersect? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you all this. Is it possible, is it possible that uh, they cross at a point that's a really weird decimal? Like, do you think all lines cross at like, you know, 2 comma 3? They're nice whole numbers. We try and make them that way because, you know, we're in this class to get you the understanding. But at the most part, if you actually had some sort of pretty complex math you're working on, whole numbers don't normally happen. And that's okay. So, but watch this, ready? If I wanted to figure out where they cross, that's called an intersection, yes? Second, calculate, intersect. Line one, line two, guess, no, I want, you, I want the answer. This will cross at negative one comma four. Okay, so does that appear to be about negative one comma four up here? Pretty close. Are you going to teach me how to do that? Well, we'll just work along with it, right? We'll figure it out. But this, if you did this all correctly on your graph, I mean, does it look like my point right there is negative one comma four? I think so. If we plug negative one comma four into each of these, uh, let's see, if I plug into this, my y component is 4, my x component is negative 1 plus 5, so 4 equals negative 1 plus 5, so 4 equals 4, yep, that works. If I plug it into this one, I'm going to get 4 equals negative 4 times um, negative 1, right? What's negative 4 times negative 1? 4. 4. Is 4 equal 4? That's how our solution works. So again, your graphing calculator, it could be used as a valuable tool on this. For the most part, we're trying to determine if you know how to graph by hand. But here's the problem with graphing by hand. I don't see any of you with a ruler out, nor did I supply any of you with a ruler. And I didn't even use a ruler. So I'm graphing by freehand. Hopefully, I don't have like some jaggedy line. And I'm just getting lucky that I'm graphing pretty accurately on something that big. Okay, so the graphing calculator might be a valuable tool. The graphing is a valuable way to see the visual representation of these, but it's not the perfect method. Okay? It's not the perfect method. And we will learn other methods throughout this unit that will show us a better way to find out how and where our solutions exist. Um, so the solution to a system of linear equations is the intersection point, the point that both lines have in common. So is the point 4, negative 3 a solution to that system of equation? And a system of equations is when you have two or more graphs that you've graphed on the same grid. OK, 
Okay, so this is an x value, this is a y value, agree? Let's plug them in and see how it works. So I'll plug into this first one. I get negative 3 is equal to negative 2 times 4 plus 5. Negative 3 equals negative 8 plus 5. What's negative 8 plus 5? Negative 3. So does this point exist on this in this equation? Yes. Okay. Is that point the solution to this system of equations? You think I can just plug into one of them and call it good? No. You have to plug into both. Okay. Especially if the first one says, hey, yeah, this is true. That works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and plug it in here. So my x value is 4 plus 2 times my y value is negative 3. Is that equal to negative 2? Uh, let's take a look. 4 plus, what's 2 times negative 3? Negative 6 equal negative 2. What is 4 added to negative 6? Negative 2. So I wind up with two, negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So this is also a point in the second equation. It gave me true on both. Is it a solution to the problem? Now, how these problems are set up, the green one is ready to plug into your graphing calculator. Because the graphing calculator accepts things in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. If it's not set up as y equals mx plus b, your calculator will not recognize it. So if you're going to use your graphing calculator, you either have to manipulate your equation or you have to do it by hand. All right. Um, Number two, is 1 comma 5 a solution to the system? So what should we do with 1 comma 5 on this problem? Yeah, so there's an x value, there's a y value. I'm going to take the x, plug it in for the x. So if I bring this down over here, I get 3 times 1, because our x value is 1, minus our y value is 5 equals negative 2. We'll do the arithmetic. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 5 is equal to, is 3 minus 5 equal to negative 2? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this works. So that just means this point here is one of the points on that grid. But if I want to check what this one does, I want to look at this one. Let's plug it in. So my y value is what? 5 equals 2 times, what's my x value? 1 minus 3. 5 equals, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3. What's 2 minus 3? How much? Is 5 equal to negative 1? No, we didn't discover some obscure loophole in math. So this doesn't work. So let me ask you, up here, our point worked on both, gave us both true. On this one, I had one of them was true, the other was false. So is 1 comma 5 the solution to the system of equations? It worked on one, but not on the other. So is it a solution? No. no. Does that mean that these are parallel lines, though? Yeah. No, sir. They don't have to be parallel. They don't have to be anything like that, that just means that, hey, this point right here does not work. So that doesn't work. So th is this a point? Is this point here a solution? Not a solution to the system. The system being two or more things graphed on the same. Last slide, we good? Ready? Where is it? Oh, I was almost forgot. Okay. This is a this is the solution. How do I know the solution? Plug in your information. I think I already had this slide already. Did I? I think I just went back to the wrong slide. Alright, so remember this. You will have System that looks like that, what does that mean? No solution because of what reason? 
They're parallel. They don't cross. So parallel lines don't cross. So that means no solution. Next one, they happen to cross each other. We have crossing. So the answer is a point. So you figure out what the point is. This looks to be negative 2, 3. Negative 2, comma 3. If you plug negative 2 comma 3 into both of those, you get a true statement. You would get uh, 3 equals 3, 3 equals 3, it works on both, yay happy. There's one solution. Parallel don't cross, there's not a solution. If they cross each other, there's one solution, that one solution happens to be the point. In this class, a lot of times, we will allow that solution to come out to a nice whole number, okay? But they don't have to come out to exact values. And then we have the last situation which is there's only one line drawn. What does that mean? It's the same line. It's the same, same line drawn. So we're going to say that uh, same line. So we have uh, infinite solutions. Does that mean that the point like right here is a solution to the problem? Is this point right here a solution to this problem? No, it has to fall on it, but it means that the lines on top of each other, they touch nonstop. So you have infinite solutions. A okay? I want to give you some time to start. Let's see. Your homework is going to be page 140. 141. If you forgot your book, get with somebody who has theirs and uh, get a start on it. Bless you. 140, 141. And again, this is our very last unit, so let's make this one count. 